my peace. Isn't that true? Do you need to reconcile with someone? Would you look in Ephesians chapter 4, please? Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians 4, we're going to go to uh, verse 29. We'll read a few verses there. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, to the use of edifying. That's a big word for Christians. We should edify one another, lift up one another, not put down. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 30, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Those verses are clear and they really speak to our hearts. These verses are actually a commentary on how to think, how to talk, and how to treat other people. And the results are peace. I again quote uh, Luke 2.14, And on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Well, uh, the, angels, the angels' words, in summary, were first of all, glory to God. We talked about that. Secondly, on earth, peace. We talked about that. And now the last part of that verse, I think it's 14. Goodwill toward men. Well, the Christian message is a message of love and hope and forgiveness. And, and our message to the lost is there's a God in heaven that loves you. He's made provision for your sin. He, uh, he, he came to earth, took on flesh, died in your place to pay for your sin. It was uh, Spurgeon, the great English preacher of the 1800s, who said in a sermon, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, if a lost man should say to God, how do I know that you care for me? How do I know that you have concern for me? He said, God would point him to the manger. And he would say to him, would I have sent my son to come to earth, to live among men, to be born of them? Would I have given him if I had not cared for you? Would I have allowed him to grow up and then die on a cross if I didn't care for you? Thought-provoking words indeed. Now there's a bit of prophecy in verse 14 too. Go back to Luke 2 one more time, if you would. Verse 14, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now, there's a bit of prophecy there. What do you mean, Pastor? On earth peace. 
That doesn't happen. We talked a little bit about that this morning when I talked about the uh, Prince of Peace. That's prophecy right there. On earth, peace. There is a coming time of peace. It is going to happen. It's literally going to happen. What's going to happen? Here's what's going to happen. The rapture is the next big event on the chronological calendar of Scripture. The rapture is when Christ appears in the air, the trumpet sounds, we're called up to meet him in the air. It might be in our lifetimes. We don't know the day or the hour. It might be in our lifetime. All the signs are pointing toward the rapture. After the rapture comes that terrible time of trouble, all of the wars that break out, and Christ returns at the very worst part of uh, that war when all human flesh would be destroyed, but he puts an end to it. Defends Israel over there in the Mideast. Um, there's a judgment. Then uh, we go into the kingdom age, Christ ruling. At last there's peace. That's the peace that's prophesied here in Luke chapter 2, verse 14. And on earth, peace. That hasn't happened yet, but it is going to. There can be peace in our individual hearts. There can be peace in our, uh, our church societies and so forth. But um, peace in the world, it's always limited indeed. But it's going to happen. And then, <laughs> uh, on earth, peace. Would you close your eyes, please? And bow your heads. Do you need to reconcile with someone? Is there maybe a festering, um, lingering spirit of unforgiveness? Maybe it's someone in your family. Maybe it's someone close to you. Uh, maybe there's someone you need to go to. You need to obey what Ephesians 4, 29 through 32 said to us tonight. God doesn't want us to have those things in our lives. And this is a great time of the year to get that settled. And I'm not sure that that's the case with anybody here tonight. But it seemed to me to be a perfect time to bring up the possibility that um, there could be a situation where there's a need to reconcile. God was willing to forgive us. Can we do less? And be right with him? Oh, no, we can't. Why don't you just talk to the Lord about it right now and say, God, give me the wisdom to take care of this. Help me to do it for Jesus' sake. Father, I thank you tonight for this time of uh, fellowship in the Word of God. I pray, Lord, that we'll all the speaker included, take these words uh, to heart tonight that you have shown us from Holy Scripture. We look forward to the time that there will be peace and all of this confusion will end at last. Thank you for that promise. We thank you for this special time tonight to fellowship with one another. In Jesus' name, amen.